spoiler alert, you're gonna see the most massive centipede you've ever seen, I've ever seen in my entire life. Maybe the biggest one you've ever seen in your entire life in this video. Dude, for like- Were you gonna pull that open or? Um, that's up to Ty, it's taped shut, so. Okay, I'm down. Top of the morning, friends and family. I am in Tacoma, Washington, and I'm driving a truck lent to me by Tyler Kirk of the Spider Shop. Tyler has been kind enough to host me, kind enough to host me and let me have his truck for the weekend, so thanks, Tyler. We're gonna go check out his shop right now and see how cool it is. Uh, I haven't been to the Northwest in forever, so I'm pretty excited to be back up here. I used to live up this way, actually, a long time ago. Here for the weekend for the show, so you'll be able to see a video coming up with that. Speaking of which, I've noticed by looking at my analytics finally that over half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you enjoy Cusco style content, hit the subscribe button, check it out. I used to hear people say that all the time on YouTube videos and just think, ah, everybody says that. I said it recently in a video and it actually made a difference. So I'm maybe gonna say it a little more often even though I don't wanna be that annoying guy that does that. Apparently, you need a little help. So I'm here to help. <laughs> Well, we're here at the shop. Let's check it out. This is definitely not what it would typically look like. Uh, this whole back wall of shelves has been dis uh, disassembled to take to this show. Uh, we'll set those up at the show, and I think we're going to draw a lot of attention, or hope to draw a lot of attention. The spider shop, the original OG spider shop. <laughs> so there is a video. If you if you watch the Redline Report, I did an interview with Tyler. There's a link for that video right here. If you're watching on your TV and not on your computer or phone, and there's no link here, but I'll put a link down in the description. You can hear the story of how Tyler went from being somebody who decided he just really likes spiders to actually, like, I think you're the number one shipper of invertebrates in the country at this point, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I could be off, but I don't think I am. It, it, he's, he's not worried about that status. But it's cool to have a, a physical shop here in Washington, and we're just gonna take a peek around the shop and see what it has to offer. As, as Tyler mentioned, there's a whole wall there, so the shop's not looking the way it usually would, but there's also a brand new shop that he's gonna be moving into, and we'll go check out that space before this video is over, too. I'm happy about these concrete, I've seen these like custom mold things, and so you attach them to the table, and then you, you know, um, seal them and then fill it with concrete. So you got this really cool, like modern edge to this concrete tables. Unfortunately, we're not gonna use them in the new shop. Uh, it's just not necessary. We you know, see it kind of match the checkout table counter too. Um, there's a local retired guy who builds these furniture at an old fence post. And so we had him build pretty much the exact same checkout desk, but in this style. So kind of gonna roll with that for kind of some, you know, same style furniture in the shop. Uh, yeah, so we've got this one, and there's one up there holding the green tree monitor, and there's another one back here. So changing up the style a little bit of the shop, but uh, yeah, also going from some of the exoterra and kind of cages that, you know, most people would have in their homes. We're gonna go to the PVC cages. Um, this was kind of our attempt to, we built this from scratch. Um, this houses a couple four by four these are just like glass cabinets. You know, I think we got it from a train shop, a hobby shop that was going out of business. And um, these are just 10 gallons. So we built this structure to house these uh, 10 gallons. And, um, but it could do some, you know, it was neat, nice. So it could do some improvement for sure. There's like constantly spider webs in here. Imagine that, constant spider webs at a spider shop. I... <laughs> these were cool. Uh, here's actually some animals that we're not going to take to the show. So did you know that there's multiple types of blue tongue skink? I did. I didn't know that. <laughs> so this is a, um, I can get this guy out. He's pretty sweet. It's a northern blue tongue skink. So from Australia, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think anything from Australia is um, a little bit more valuable um, from what I understand. But yeah. He's yeah, cool. because we can't get anything from Australia anymore. So yeah. Yeah. Captive red, I believe. It's an adult male. Uh, I've been with the guy for a while. Uh, he decided to move across the country and so thought of us when uh, he wanted to come and trade for tarantulas. Yeah, we had all these nice, this artist makes these um, labels with what the animal is and some information. 
And the goal was initially to have those on every tank, right? Just to have it look nice and almost like a zoo on what, what's in there. And we've fallen off of that kind of discipline of keeping those tags on. Of course, we have some animals that we don't, don't have that stuff. But here's another Australian. If you look on Morph Market, I think there's only one guy that has these. They're the prickly knobtail gecko, Nefurus asper. And he's got them on there for like 2,500 bucks. Um, so another really unique animal. And that, that's part of what I love about having the shop too, is that people come in and they've never even seen that before. And you know, no difference to them, you know, a leopard gecko versus this, but of course there is a huge value difference. But um, yeah, to have a place where people could go and see things they never saw before and kind of enjoy, uh, yeah, seeing cool stuff in the enclosures here. Most of the stuff uh, here is packed away for the show. So we've got them all out of their enclosures and into these, you know, temporary uh, enclosures for the show. I always wonder what, you know, you go to a show and you see like tables covered in these containers. And I always wondered like what it looks like when they take them home. Like, do they really, like I've seen, you know, what, like 10 tables covered in these. Like, do they really all have cages at, the, at home? I don't, I, I would hope so, you know. Like all of these are housed in these you know, 10 gallons or more, they don't, they don't live in this. Uh, I hope that's the case for some of those other um, situations. Yeah, never, never bred bull pythons, but we brought in this trio of uh, blue-eyed Lucy's. I thought it might be a cool breeding project. We've had them for over a year now, and we thought she was producing eggs. She's looking like she's extra thick, you know, but no luck, no, no eggs, um, and ready to pass them on. So we're gonna offer them for sale for the first time at the show. So here at the spider shop, he's got plenty of dry goods and uh, you know, classic things. <laughs> the heat wave ride, I didn't even know these made these things anymore. That's pretty cool to see one. Probably a little better quality than ones we used to put in our enclosures back in the 80s, but that was, that was fun. But Tyler's gonna show us a bunch of the animals that are still here and not going to the show. Um, Pacific Northwest Reptile Show that we will be attending as well. So you'll see a video from that soon, but Here's some of the animals that Tyler has here in the shop right now. What, what about the heat rock? The heat rock I know is not uh, not recommended. Yeah. <laughs> I think we bought one of each size and they've been there the whole year we've been in the shop. Uh, I, I, I'm just surprised that they still make them. I, they must be better than the ones in the 80s, I'm assuming. I would hope so. I mean, uh, definitely want to use a thermostat if you're gonna use them, right? Yeah, uh, thermostat and everything, for sure. Okay, so this is the house of a thousand spiders. <laughs> this is the, the warehouse, the vault. Yeah, so it's uh, not unusual that we get a shipment of maybe 8,000 or 10,000 tarantulas at a time. You know, they come in spiderlings, right? And so this is, yeah, this is where we keep all of our stock. Everything you see online is here in this back room. Kind of have a system. We use these keeper boxes and they store 80 vials each. And you know, they, they're all ventilated. Some of them have water dishes, some of them just get moisture, um, and it's all alphabetical. So we've got, you know, your fauna pelmas, your avicularias, cereopagapus, chelobrachys, um, all the way over to your orphanicus, your formictopus, your flamingo chylus, and that goes all the way around. And uh, then on the other shelves, we have some juveniles. People will come in and want a certain spider, and then they have the task of finding it back here. Uh, which can be difficult. Sometimes we have one left and it's like, oh, where is it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I remember going to the wholesaler. There's a huge wholesaler in, in Everett. I remember going up there and seeing, they had like 40,000 tarantulas, he told me. And, you know, he had multiple rooms like this. But I remember just being in shock and awe about being in the presence of so many. And I think people get that experience being here too some, sometimes. Uh, for me, it's just, you know, another, another day. So there's like 3,200 spiders just on this bottom shelf down here. And then up here, there's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so 14, 21, 28, 35 times 80 is another. So there's like 6,000 spiders just right here on, this, on these two shelves. All right, since we're showing all this, you have good security cameras, et cetera. We have, yes, we have trip wires, we have explosive devices, so we have torturous, torturous uh, things that I can't even mention on video. 
Um, we have, yes, steel locking mechanisms and video camera <laughs> and all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, this is more than just a better warehouse. This is a, a death trap. Like, you really got to watch your step, okay? So I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> I have cameras and I have a deadbolt. And we have a key code lock there. But that's one reason why I don't like people back here or, or to know where things are, especially. Like, I mean, people can come back here. Oh, thankfully, it's not very, how do I say this? You can't come in here and take something and take it to the pawn shop, right? So it's really a niche, uh, niche item. You can't really get value out of it. Um, so I kind of count on that. And then also like, they don't know where to find certain things, you know? So that's another, I guess, safeguard is I don't let people back here. I don't show them like where things are, um, particular species, you know? Um, but we're doing it right now on camera. Yeah, but we're going to be moving soon, so. That's all right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so this is the new space that Tyler is moving into soon, maybe as early as next month or in a couple months. 5220 South Tacoma Way, much bigger space. Um, you're going to have to come check him out if you're in the Tacoma, Seattle area when he gets this place going. Tyler, so when, when do you hope to be in here? Uh, Cody at Wisconsin Custom Cages. I hope those cages get done ASAP so we can get in here ASAP, you know? <laughs> that's, that's the major kind of holdback. I'm waiting for the sign to be delivered and be installed and, you know, finish touching up some paint here. Uh, but there's not really any other hurdles for us to get into this space other than picking a moving day and moving everything over. Nice. Um, cool, man. Okay, well, I gotta try this now. I mean, I just got done getting bitten by an SCAL, so this can't be that bad. The thing is so big. <laughs> oh no, we're gosh. not. We're not going on the hand. <laughs> it's the warmth, is what it is. Hold it next to your face for the video. Please give him a kiss. No, that's not <laughs> happening. I mean, he looks super chill right now, but so did my subspinifs before it bit me. I gave it a roach, and then I tried to pick it up by the tail while I had the roach in the mouth, and it dropped the roach, turned around, and... Oh, yeah. I... This might be a peed A peed this right big? A peed this big, I'm treating like a snake. <laughs> You're... Huh? With bare hands? No. So if 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 it just kind of latched on but didn't pierce, it's probably testing whether or not your food because you're warm. I'm good. Great. <laughs> uh. Where did he, where'd he go? Uh, yep, he's right there. I think it's time that we, uh... Dude, that thing is huge. Take a picture of this time. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not scared. As long as it doesn't get in my, uh... You can look over some more. Nothing like having a 10-inch centipede on your back. Or under, under your, on my shoulder? Yeah, there he is. Oh, I see him. Okay. There we go. <laughs> hey, bud. What if he crawled up on your beard? <laughs> ah, oh, well. This would definitely not be the worst thing that I've had in my beard. Look at how, that's insane. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. That's a really pretty peed. Is this a white leg? Yeah. All right. No, that's okay, it's okay. As long as, as long as I can feel his little, uh, the little wow. teeth. That's the spider shop. Big things coming up for Tyler there. Big thank you again, Tyler, for having me out. And um, man, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Aloha.